Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to our series on the Jesus Movement and bringing the Jesus Movement forward to today. Um, we've had a number of wonderful guests on, Nancy Honeytree and Glenn Kaiser, uh, Chuck Smith Jr. We have a surprise guest uh, tonight and someone that needs no introduction to you, but um, it's very important that she be in this group and be considered in this group because she was involved in the Jesus movement too. I think in some ways, maybe, uh, maybe in ways um, more than she even knew. Uh, of course, I'm speaking of my wife, Marty Fisher, and we are going to interview Marty because uh, she became a Christian right around then, right around the 70s. We'll, we'll get down to that and uh, became involved uh, in a number of things. Hal Lindsey School uh, down in L.A. and, and starting a, a, a number of new ministries. One of the characteristics, the one we're looking at during this, this, uh, this, in, this week is that um, uh, the leadership arose from among the new believers. And there's no better example I know than the leadership that Marty uh, brought to the table in 1970, 71. So uh, enough, enough of that. Uh, here's my wife, uh, Marty Fisher. <laughs> okay. And, uh, I, I want to just start right out by asking her to talk about her experience during during what we call the Jesus movement, because, you see, a lot of people have a tendency to think that Jesus movement was just a bunch of musicians and hippies. And Marty was never a musician and she was never a hippie. So what on earth uh, was she doing and how did she experience the Jesus movement? Uh Gosh, honey, you can start wherever you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's an open field. Yes. Um, well, I can simply say that I did come to know the Lord at a time in my life where um, uh, that I was I was given the, the, the gift of grace and um, a sinner of no sinner of all sinners. And even to this day, I went, whoa, whoa, wow. Yikes. I'm OK. And he loves me. And um, uh, there was a born again experience for sure and um, um I, I someone had given me a bible and i opened it up and i and i there's thousands and thousands and thousands of verses in this book <laughs> and and the pages are so teeny thin that surely i thought everyone gets to have a verse so how would i find mine but open it up and point to the verse and i did and my verse was and remains to be, go out and make disciples of all men. Matthew 28, and, uh, 19 and 20, yeah. And so um, being a brand new believer in this person called Jesus Christ, I figured that he needed to have, have to put me through boot camp to see whether or not I was worth the weight of what it would be to have the whole world. Okay, uh, I'm going to interrupt you. I'm sorry. It's okay, you, I don't care. Can you tell us um, that experience? And, and, and people need to understand too that you at that time, at this time, you were a flight attendant, correct, with United <laughs> Airlines. And uh, I'd love for you to tell the story about uh, uh, Hetrick, um, and because in a sense that was a very early key of of your development as, as a leader, I think. Mm -hmm right yep yep you're right and so uh, again i got someone gave me the bible someone told me that i needed to go to church and i and that the pastors in all churches were available to those that loved the lord and so again um, um i i had an opportunity to go to a church um where it was reverend patrick uh was the pastor and um I heard him speak that Sunday morning, and I came back later, than, actually the next morning, and came into his office, bypassed his secretary because 
he was there for me, like they said, and, um, and, and into his office. And, and, and my first thing to him was, how do I know that what you say is the truth? And I, in the process of this, sat down, made myself very, very comfortable. Um, I, I had these cool white go-go boots and a terribly short, short, short skirt because that was in. And, um, and eyelashes that were the fake ones that went up to the eyes. Um, um, and I pulled out a cigarette, which I did smoke, pulled out a cigarette, lit it up, pulled it to myself. And poor, poor Mr. H Reverend Hetrick didn't know what to do. I mean, he, he cupped his hand, he had no, he, looking around going, what am I gonna use for an ashtray? And, and, and it only he had was his hands. And, um, and, and I'm asking this question, about how do I know if you, what you say are telling me the truth? He came out from underneath his desk, out, out behind his desk, sat down to, next to me and said, you don't, you don't. Hmm. Um, and then he spent a whole lot of time getting to know me. Hmm. And um, he got me into, you have to have a concordance you have to have the the, the, the Western Bible uh, dictionary to be able to describe what the, what the word is. You need to go to a seminary. You need to do all these things. And um, so he sent me to the US, uh, UCLA campus, where there was a school that was um, headed by Hill, and he did not know who the boy was, the man was, um, but that it, it was a three-year school. Mm -hmm. And um, and there were many amazing people along with it. So I I I, uh, I was flying as a flight attendant. So in order to be able to go to school during the whole week, I um, got worked to where I would be flying the flights over the weekend. And um, and and so there I am. And but the, but the next really more important step is that you know I I I, asked, I, I said Lord, you know, if I bring you the airlines. Will you give me the world? And so I, we had a deal, and I brought him the airlines. Um, the way that began, which is simply the beginning, was um, um, I, I every single flight I prayed before I got on the flight to bring me someone to teach me, and then someone who would um, uh, I could bring to the Lord. And at every single flight. There was someone always that was made so obvious that they were there to teach me and somebody equally as obvious to needing to know the Lord. It was so consistent that I started uh, bidding flights where I would go on what they call the milk run, which would be from LA to Stockton to Sacramento, to all these little teeny teeny towns up to San Francisco and back down again. And every single flight for two years, Two years, uh, the Lord brought me someone, and 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 the poor dear individual that was to that I was to bring to the Lord, basically had a sign saying, "Here, me, me, right here, right here." Um, <laughs> uh, 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 it was incredible, and um, and then I went, "Well, we have to start something," and so I, I, uh, I what there's these disciples I'm hearing about in the in the old in New Testament. There were twelve of them. I need twelve men, and. Out of nowhere, there were 12 pilots who showed up in the chatting that we've been doing about what was going on. And, and there was my base. And uh, from that uh, uh, began a, an unbelievable experience of, of, of growth within uh, the, the Los Angeles area. Um, um, I began a Bible study. <laughs> I maybe mean, two or three weeks into knowing the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, um, 90 flight attendants, Wednesday night. I had them walking around the streets with one being blindfolded and the other one uttering so they could explore what it was like to know what faith was. I did not know what I was doing, but you want to know what the Lord did. Um, and and, and um, then we're like, well, we have to, this, this is my job. I mean, we'll, we have to bring people from the airlines to the Lord. So, you know, okay, I, I got to do volume now. And um, I went around to the hotels in the area who had these uh, uh, convention centers. 
and I book them for free. I say, no, 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 I can't pay. I have no money, but I'm booking you because I need you for Thursday night and I'm bringing a thousand people with me. And I then with these little stupid little uh, um, signs that say, come to the Hyatt Hotel at XYZ time, this date um, um, to hear about the Lord. And um, <laughs> each night that we did this, it was it was sporadic. Each night we did this, a thousand people showed up. Here's the thing. I needed a speaker, I knew now, and I needed some music, some entertainment. This is where I, I in, in, a, in an unusual way, came around the back door of knowing what the Jesus music musicians were about. But I met these people on my flight. Barry McGuire was my man to teach me about the truth on a flight. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I, do you know what, 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 what are you like? Well, I, I sing, uh, you sing, and you know the Lord, I need you in LA at the Hyatt House, um, Tuesday night at eight o'clock. He was there. <laughs> um, uh, similarly, um, Lindsay, uh, uh, other quote unquote well-known individuals of the season of whom I did not know were there. Faithful, faithful men. And thousands and thousands of people came to the Lord. Uh, I, it, it, to me, it was like, well, this is it. This is what you do. This is, must be like what it is to live the life of Christ. Mm. And you want to know what? <clears throat> it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. And, um, I, you know, did you realize that? That there was something going on, or you just think that this was? It sounds like you just thought this was a normal thing. You weren't. You weren't a part of a Jesus oh. movement. No, you? no, no, not at all. No, I would go on a flight instead of having my layover clothes on my my suitcase. Yeah. I would have the concordance. Remember that big, big, strong concordance thing, and the Webster dictionary. And I would go um, and, and and speak to a pa- passenger and say, "How are you feeling? How are you doing?" And they go, oh, I'm not too terribly. I'm sad or I'm having difficulty with my family, whatever. And I would take up the strong, the strong concordance and go, well, let's see what it says about um, 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 uh, uh, lack of faith. And, 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 and up they come these words. And then we go to the Webster Dictionary uh, uh, um, and, and explain where that came from. And then out came my Bible and to say, well, it's very clear. Here we are. And I said, since you have this answer now, is there any reason why you can't come to know the Lord? I mean, we're closer to heaven than anybody else. Is there, <laughs> is there any reason why you couldn't, with your heart and, and your mind, accept the Lord Jesus Christ? No. And we would pray on the airplane. It was, it was, it, it was, it was just like this. My, I was a soldier and, and this is my job. And I was proving to him in boot camp that I could have the world. From, from L.A., moved to Seattle, moved to San Francisco, um, um, and, um, and then on to uh, the Fellowship of Christian Airline, which is now an international organization in every single Thomas Hale. Did I have any understanding about that was going on? Absolutely not. Hmm. All I was doing was, if I, if I make this boot camp, then I get the world. Hmm. That was it. Hmm. And, and, and it's a pretty amazing um, number of people all... So, so many people that came to know the Lord along that way. Absolutely nothing to do. I just thought this is the way to life. This is this must be what it is to be a Christian. Hmm. You, 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 you ask, and, and, and is this not a good time? And they would say yes or no. Hmm. And maybe, maybe the problem with me is, is that I'm, I cannot handle anyone telling me no. So maybe the reality was is that. Uh, uh, we just chatted until he had an opportunity to understand wow. what he was saying wow. yesterday. Wow, that's 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 incredible. Now, when we look from the outside, when we think in terms of the fact that there really was something going on, that that the spirit was moving in a special way, and people were coming, and and we experienced it as you know on the street. Or in the church uh, where I was at, Peninsula Bible Church, oh. hippies would just start to come. And high school kids, high school kids, were, our high school group went from 30 people to 300 in about two weeks. You know, oh. 
something was going on. Did you ever, <laughs> did you ever get the clue? Oh, that you really didn't, did you? No, uh -uh, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> this, was the, this was the normal Christian life. And when you yeah, met me, what? when what? you met me, when you met me, you didn't, <laughs> you didn't know who I was and you didn't know what Christian music was and can, none can, of it can, made any can, difference. Can I tell people what it was to meet you? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, um, it, this was a conference between Los <laughs> Angeles, San Francisco and Seattle domiciles. And we were in uh, Mount Hermon, a place, you know, in, in a mountain area, whatever, it doesn't matter. But there was supposed to be a collective retreat track place. Mm -hmm. And um, San Francisco, my, call, my, my coalition in San Francisco were, were making this thing happen. The F, uh, of the think, FCAP, right? right? The Fellowship yeah, of Christian yeah, Airline yeah. Personnel. Yeah, yeah. but the, the group out of, uh, out of San Francisco was making this, this three domicile right. thing happen. And, there, and so there were flight attendants and pilots and mechanics and, and, and um, individuals all associated with the airlines were at this quote unquote convention retreat. Um, we had an amazing, uh, amazing speaker, but there was this guy who was um, um, the entertainment. I mean, that's literally, Johnny, sorry, how you were, for me, how I saw you, it was like, oh, good. We're going to sing some happy songs and mm. get everybody into the mood, you know, and and there you were in the most disgusting outfit in the world. You had you had lime green pants that were bell bottom. You had this stupid, stupid shirt. That pink. Had a, it was pink, I think. What? Pink. It was pink. <laughs> it was it was ridiculous. Um, yeah. and, 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 and friends of ours, mine from L.A., the new you, thought that they would be a really, really good idea if we met each other. And um, so I went up and I introduced myself to you. And it was so clear. It was so obvious. You were this, I don't know, entertainment, you know, for this group. Um, um, I was, I, I was who I am and 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 probably I I I I got dressed for the camping experience. Mm -hmm. I've never camped before, but so mm -hmm. I was in the camping experience. So I had um, uh, my short skirt and my boots, but I had my hair in, in pigtails. <laughs> that was camping for me. And I, I couldn't have been more opposite than you under the sun. Yeah. Um, um, and uh, we, I, I introduced myself, let's just get this over with. Let's, let's go out tonight and have, uh, you know, let's get together. And so the people, our friends would know this is the most opposite, ridiculous thing that they were thinking. And you agreed absolutely, completely, and utterly ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we went out, and I remember this place had these little teeny lights on the table, mm -hmm. and uh, they dim down, quiet, everybody, quiet, quiet, quiet. And, and we proceeded to tell each other why we were not right for each other. Mm -hmm. And we just closed one to another. Oh, yeah, you got, I got, worst things I got you on that one. Mm -hmm. I, I, I did this. Mm -hmm. And, and um, that went on for uh, most of the evening until I I um, confessed that I had done a lot for this thing called Fellowship of Christian Ireland that I had started and, and was spreading everywhere. And, that, you know, at this particular conference, I would really have liked a standing ovation. How <laughs> arrogant can you get? Huh? Mm -hmm. um, um, and so what did you do? It's quiet, teeny, shh bar you stood up and went <laughs> i can still hear it yeah 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 okay stop 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 no 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 you're gonna yeah. get what you wanted what you thought yeah. you need yeah it was a great way to start a relationship what uh, it was well, a great way great way to begin well oh. it somehow has survived yeah. all these years but because <laughs> that we've been able to accept each other and our fallenness yeah and how really stupid we are yeah in the things that we do yeah but uh i it's take, taken me a while i think to really understand uh to get a grasp on your leadership and your influence in those years um uh, it really has you know because i was just only looking through one lens you know this the hippies and that this over here this is over here I, I knew I knew nothing of this you're talking no, about over there. No. Nothing whatsoever. But this is just I knew I knew Larry Norman, 
because yep. Larry was mm-hmm. in my class with him. <laughs> in class, right. You know, and, I, I, and, and oh my God, I'll never forget him. And his hair went down to his butt with beautiful blonde white hair. Um, um, uh, but he was my classmate. Mm-hmm. He wasn't. He's, he wasn't a star or person. anything. Yeah. No, no, uh, uh, no, no. I never. Johnny, I met you, okay? Uh, mm-hmm. uh, before I met you, um, uh, somebody, I was getting a little uptight by all the giant pressure that was going on uh, that I put on myself. And, and, and someone gave me an album of yours. Um, and, um, I, but having no connection whatsoever with a music group, um, um, th- th- she gave me this, this album and, and um, I never took it out of the sleeve. I don't mm-hmm. think I ever told you that, but I never mm-hmm. took it out of the sleeve. <laughs> and I, yeah. yeah it, it was, it was, it was, well, it was, you, didn't, it, it, you didn't you didn't need to because pretty soon you got got personal concerts at least uh, a couple but but here's the thing when i didn't know that you were the same person on, yeah. on the cover yeah you were just this guy yeah and just, and, and and at you in my little teen apartment in santa monica was singing these sweet sweet songs hmm. it was just but they were dear they were lovely they were not Jesus music changed the world songs. Yeah. Maybe they were, but for to me, yeah. they were just very sweet. So, so this thing was happening and it was happening to us. And we knew about a very little bit about what we were doing. Um, what, how do we, let's bring this forward. What of this, what of all this applies to us today? And especially, let's think in terms of uh, the younger generation, because they're the ones who are going to take this this good news on into the new frontier. You know, um, the, the millennials and the Gen Z people. Yeah, what can we what can we tell teach or what can we bring forward from this experience for today? Uh, 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 the first and foremost thing is, is that. Mm-hmm. Um, movement hasn't stopped hmm. and anyone that was a witness of that time know that jesus christ within them mm-hmm. and so therefore has not stopped and from my life as in multiple people's lives wherever they went magic happened yeah. whenever i am working in the world amazing amazing magic happened through the opportunity for me to be able to lead and create, not because it was so terribly marvelous for me, but just like the Fellowship of Christian Airlines, it just happened. Hmm. And 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 where we are, where we are today is we we have a whole lot of people who are 60, 65 and older who were witnesses of this Jesus movement that actually saw all my flood attendants, okay? That, that, that came to the Lord, all, all, all of your musicians and all of your, the people that you influenced through your music. We all were witnesses to this. Mm-hmm. We, we have this Jesus Christ. We witnessed the movement, but we, 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 we did take the Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit with him. We have it. And what my biggest mission, mission right now is, um, remember I told you that, um, I gave them the airlines mm-hmm. and that I asked for the world. If I gave them the airlines, could I have the world? Mm-hmm. Well, what I'm being given right now are the millennials. This is a generation of people between 20 and 30 who are experiencing very similar social issues that were going on at the very same time in the, in the late 60s, early 70s. Hmm. Um, um, there are so many similarities between those over 65 that witnessed the Jesus movement and these individuals who are called the millennial generation. Um, um, I'm, I am, I'm going to introduce these people who are over 65 that think they're done, done, done. I'm gonna wake up in them, not me, but Jesus, that, that, that they're not done. This, this movement is not over. I don't mean that there's going to be a, a great awakening um, um, of the Holy Spirit. I don't, but that I have the Holy Spirit, you have the Holy Spirit, 
other individuals that witnessed it have it is is they must activate hmm. and create relationships to a generation hmm. that is so much more like them hmm. than just hmm. Hmm. wow well yeah. <laughs> How do we do it? Uh, we, we we don't have much time left, so um, I know that's a big question. But uh, how 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 do we do it? How do we step over those generations? And uh, I, I I I am going to I have created a workshop. Um, um, I'm I, I obviously I'm a believer in multiplication. You know, starting LA. Fellowship Vocation Relay to San Francisco to Seattle and then into the uh, 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 FCAP and every single domicile in the world. I believe in multiplication. I I am hopeful of creating workshops where I'm inviting people who were who were the Jesus movement with, uh, originals, the ones that experienced uh, 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 the movement and that still hold that reality to activate it today instead of looking back at the good old days, but today and and, um, and help them step through the, the barriers of, of stereotype understanding of who they are and, and where they can come together because there's so many things that are more common than different. And then, and then um, having them become um, comfortable and, 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 and free to, enter, to actually create what the millennials need more than anything, and that is relationships. They do not know, at this point, mm -hmm. they do not need to know what's in your head. Mm -hmm. They need someone that, 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 that is willing to care, to care from the point of view of a real relationship, like a long lasting relationship, not mm -hmm. like, how you doing? You've got the Lord, but, but no, no, um, a, a, a true interacting relationship where where my millennials get to be able to share their stuff with these individuals over 65. Mm -hmm. And and as they walk and talk, my people that are over 65 can in fact walk along with them. And and, and by multiplication, this one workshop could turn into every single one of those individuals if they got it and they did it themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By multiplication, just like the early church, yeah, we've got the millennials. We've got the entire generation taken care of. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, let's pray about that, and let's believe that that it's going to happen. And I would prefer I could interrupt you because you're my husband. Yeah. Thank you. I, I'm thankful that we would pray. Mm -hmm. You need to believe and act. Act. There's no, there's no, mm, I think I'll think about this. No, uh-uh. Just like when, when it happened in, in the early days of the Jesus movement, mm -hmm. nobody had a, hmm, I think I'll sit down and look at this. It was happening. Mm. It was active. It was community. It was, mm. at least in my world, magic. Mm. Jesus moved everywhere. Mm. I, that is, there's nothing different. I have the same Holy Spirit. You yeah. do. Yeah. The people I know that they're associated with the catch do, hmm. they just need to be activated, not chat about it, just activate it. Well, folks, um, you heard it. You heard it first here, and uh, uh, the, from a from a woman who brought the airlines to the Lord and now is waiting and working on getting the rest of the world. I'm not done. The millions, and she's not done, and you're not done, and I'm not done either. So that's that's what we need to remember uh, today on this one. And uh, God bless you all, whether you're older or younger. We're going to get together. Amen. 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 Okay. Thank you very much to our guest, Mrs. Marty Fisher, and. Uh, <laughs> We, uh, Thank you, Chad. It was nice. You know, to we'll, we'll be hearing more from you later. I'm sure you will. <laughs> All right. Bye bye, everybody.